It's January, so time for some Blu-ray haul videos. Hey everybody, welcome to Mainly Movies. Well, it's January, so that means I recently got some new Blu-rays, and it's time to share those new holiday pickups with you. Since I don't usually get a ton of new Blu-rays throughout the year, I don't do monthly haul videos like a lot of other people do. Instead, the bulk of my annual collection growth comes at the end of the year thanks to various store and distributor sales, and of course, Black Friday. So these are all movies that I either received for Christmas or got as part of some sort of sale at the end of the year, mostly Black Friday and Cyber Monday. With that in mind, I've got a number of new additions to include in this haul. So many, in fact, that like the last couple years, I need to split this video into two parts to keep it a semi-reasonable length. So part one here is going to consist of more standard releases, and part two, which I'll be posting in a few days, is going to be exclusively Criterion Collection movies. As we go through these films, you'll see I've got a pretty good mix of movies and years here, including some films that I actually haven't seen yet. This haul's almost entirely made up of standard Blu-rays, but I do have a couple 4K movies in there too. To make it easy to follow, I'm just going to go through these in alphabetical order. If you're interested in getting any of these movies yourself, I do have affiliate links to almost all of them in the description below. I do get a small commission from anything you buy using one of my links, so I'd really appreciate it if you use them if you're in the market for any of these movies. Alright, so let's kick things off with the A's. So we've got A Call to Spy, which is a 2019 historical spy thriller drama. Um, so I have seen this one before. I got a screener for it a few years back, and I actually really enjoyed it. It, it kind of surprised me. I didn't know that the movie existed before I got the screener, and I didn't know about the story either. Uh, it's based on a true story, or at least a true premise, uh, in which these kind of average regular civilian women were recruited to uh, be spies during World War II. So it's a, it's a pretty interesting movie, uh, and I'm glad to have it on Blu-ray. Next up, we've got Ad Astra. Uh, so this is another 2019 movie. Uh, this is one that I've seen as well. I actually did a review for it back in the day. This was one of my first reviews on the channel, actually. Um, and so I, I actually haven't seen it since I did that review. The only time I saw it was in theaters. Um, but I did enjoy it. It's a, kind of this Brad Pitt sci-fi um, expedition kind of movie, space expedition, I should say. Um, and it, it was good. It was very visually um, impressive. Story-wise, kind of, kind of interesting, different than what I expected, slower paced than what I expected, but uh, still good. Uh, and I, I was surprised I didn't already own it. I kind of thought I did, actually, for a while there, but I didn't, so I picked it up on Black Friday. Next up is one that I'm very excited about, and that is Air Bud. Um, so this is a 1997 Disney live action movie, one of those uh, kind of animal live action movies that were huge to me when I was a kid. Um, and the reason why I'm so excited about this is because this Blu-ray is stupidly hard to find. Um, I have this on DVD. I've had it on I had it on VHS and then on DVD. Um, but this uh, I, I don't know why. I have no explanation for why this Blu-ray is so hard to find, other than I don't think they pressed many copies. Um, but this this is a really fun movie. Um, probably one that's better if you grew up with it. Uh, but basically, you've got this golden retriever who kind of has this natural talent to be able to play basketball. And he plays basketball on the team with this kid um, at the school team, high school team, or junior high, I think, actually. Um, but it it sounds kind of corny, uh, and there are aspects that are kind of cheesy like that, you know, dog playing basketball. But it actually has a lot more heart, um, and there's kind of these darker aspects to the story that you might not expect. Um, but I'm really looking forward to revisiting this one, because it's actually been quite a while since I last watched this movie. Next up, we've got All Quiet on the Western Front. So this is the, uh, the original adaptation, the 1930 uh, Lewis Milestone movie. Um, and so this is a really influential uh, World War I movie that kind of 
is the story of these soldiers who, who join the army, the German army, uh, kind of expecting war to be kind of this fun, glory-filled um, adventure. And then they realize that it's not that at all. And it's this kind of this very powerful anti-war kind of film. Um, so I picked this up because I wanted to revisit this movie. It's been a long, long time. Um, since I rewatched this, uh, so I wanted to rewatch it ahead, ahead of the new uh, adaptation that is on Netflix now, um, that is possibly going to be an Oscar-nominated film this year. We'll see. Um, but I wanted to uh, rewatch this one and then watch that one to kind of have have both in my mind. Next up, a little bit different, <laughs> is Ambulance. Uh, so this was a 2022 movie directed by Michael Bay. I do have a review for this one up on the channel, uh, and this is just kind of a very classic Michael Bay movie. It's actually a remake uh, of uh, of another movie called The Ambulance, um, and this stars Jake Gyllenhaal and Yahya Abdul-Mateen II, uh, and it's basically this, it starts off as kind of this heist film, this bank robbery, and then turns into this extended car chase movie. Uh, when the uh, the robbers steal an ambulance uh, along with the EMT within it as well as a police officer that was shot during the heist. Um, so very action-packed, very kind of over-the-top, sort of stupid in that Michael Bay, Bayhem kind of way, um, but entertaining uh, to a certain extent. Next, we've got American Psycho. So this is a 2000 movie, and it's one that, uh, believe it or not, I actually have not seen before. Uh, this has been on my, like, to-watch list for years and years and years. Never gotten around to it. Christian Bale is, uh, supposed to be very creepy and menacing in this, in kind of a serial killer sort of role. Um, not sort of, I think definitely a serial killer role, um, but this must be a kind of intense crime thriller, uh, and I'm looking forward to finally watching this one because it's definitely long overdue. Uh, next up we've got American Underdog. So this was a 2021 movie uh, and is a biopic starring Zachary Levi as Kurt Warner the uh, NFL star. Uh, I don't really know much about Kurt Warner other than that Pop Warner was named after him. <laughs> so uh, I, I don't know how informative this movie will be, but I have a feeling it'll be at least one of those kind of generic but heartwarming sort of tales. So I'm not, not uh, adverse to, to watching it. Moving into the Bs, we've got Bad Day at Black Rock. Uh, so this is a 1954 film um, by John Sturgis, and it stars Spencer Tracy. Uh, this is one that I really liked. I've only seen it one time, and it's been a while, but I really liked it, and I've been waiting for this Blu-ray to uh, drop in price for years now. Uh, it, it never got down as far as I would have liked it to, but I was like, I, I can't wait any longer. I want to have this on Blu-ray. Um, so this is a really... Uh, kind of interesting mystery sort of film. Uh, Spencer Tracy plays this one-armed guy that is kind of the stranger that shows up in the town of Black Rock. Uh, he comes in on the train. Nobody ever comes, right? This town is very isolated. Um, and so everybody's super suspicious of him, wants him to leave. They don't understand why he's there. Uh, and we don't understand why he's there either. Uh, and that's kind of what, what comes out uh, over the course of the film. Uh, because there, there's something going on at Black Rock. And there's a reason that uh, Spencer Tracy's character is there. And so it's a really, um, a really satisfying kind of mystery unraveling story. Next up, we've got The Banshees of Inna Sharon. So this is a 2022 movie um, directed by Martin McDonough. I do have a review for this one uh, as well, which I'll, I'll link up uh, in, in the corner here as well as in the description. Um, and so this uh, was a film that I saw at TIFF this year and was actually my favorite movie out of TIFF. Uh, so we've got Colin Farrell and Brendan Gleeson. Uh, kind of teaming up again with Martin McDonough, uh, sort of a, a re-teaming after In Bruges quite a while ago in 2008. Uh, different type of story here though, but we've still got that good interplay between them. Uh, this is a very dark, but very funny, but also kind of very sad and poignant uh, kind of movie as well. So it's a weird mix, uh, doesn't seem like it 
should work as well as it does, but it does. A uh, really great script um, and a really good story about uh, friendship and uh, friendship lost. Next up, we've got Black Adam. Uh, so again, a little bit different from the last film. This is another 2022 movie. Uh, this is actually the Best Buy exclusive Steelbook. Um, and so this is part of the DCEU. Uh, and Dwayne Johnson stars as Teth Adam, or Black Adam, this kind of anti-hero uh, within, within the DC universe. Uh, seems like it's probably going to be a bit of a non-starter in terms of a franchise at this point, with the uh, restructuring going on uh, with the DCEU, but uh, it, it was okay. Dwayne Johnson, not quite as charismatic as usual, but it, it was okay, um, and... Yeah, I have all the other DCEU films, so of course I'm going to get this one too. Next we have The Black Phone. Uh, so this one technically was released last year, but it's actually a 2021 movie um, directed by Scott Derrickson. Uh, and I really, really enjoyed this. Um, it's this period piece, uh, crime, thriller, sort of horror movie about this guy, The Grabber, played by Ethan Hawke, um, who kidnaps and, and murders kids. Uh, and so we get this um, story about this kid who gets kidnapped uh, and him, him trying to survive this kidnapping ordeal. Um, but it's got kind of this mystery element uh, as well as kind of a maybe unexpected ghostly element to it that was uh, a lot of fun and really interesting. So I'm very excited to rewatch this one. Next up, we've got Blythe Spirit. Uh, so this is the 2020 version of Blythe Spirit, um, a remake or I guess a, another adaptation of the Noel Coward play. Uh, so I really, really like the uh, 1945 version by David Lean, directed by David Lean. Um, it's kind of this ghostly romantic comedy. Uh, I, you know, I haven't heard great things about this version, um, but I was very curious about it um, when it first came out. Never got around to seeing it, and it was pretty cheap on Black Friday, so I figured, what the heck. Next up, we have Buffaloed. Uh, so this is a 2019 movie uh, directed by Tanya Wexler. Uh, and this is another one like uh, uh, Call to Spy that I watched as a screener uh, and was kind of surprised by. I didn't have any uh, expectations for it or kind of anticipation for it, but it was it was kind of fun. It's this quirky, uh, kind of crazy crime comedy. Um, uh, stars Zoe Deutsch, and she she kind of enters the world of uh, of debt collecting. Um, so she ends up buying people's debt and, and collecting on people's debt. Uh, and it's kind of this this interesting storyline that uh, seems like it shouldn't be real, but at the same time makes sense within the uh, within the movie and I think within real life. Uh, so uh, kind of kind of a fun one, a weird one though. Um, but happy to pick it up on Blu-ray. And next up, we've got Bullet Train. So this is another 2022 movie, uh, directed by David Leach. Uh, and this is, um, a very wild film. A very stylish movie with a lot of action. There's some kind of John Wick-esque action, uh, but it's a much more cramped, uh, space. It's kind of the single location. I say single location thriller. It's all occurring on the, uh, the aforementioned bullet train. However, there's a lot of cars to this train, so it's not really a single location movie in, in the sense that, uh, many other films are. But, uh, stars Brad Pitt, and it's, it's just kind of this wild sort of sort of spy movie, sort of this chaotic action thriller that was uh, a lot more fun than than I anticipated, I guess, and I think a little bit better than a lot of people give it credit for. Next, we're finally moving into the seas here with Cabin Fever. Uh, so this is a slightly older film, 2002, directed by Eli Roth. Uh, another one that I kind of didn't realize I didn't already own. Um, it's sort of a classic cabin in the woods horror movie, except 
we're throwing in sort of a flesh-eating virus at the same time. Uh, so pretty gory, pretty bloody and nasty at times. A little cheesy in that early 2000s uh, horror kind of way, but still a fun one that I'm happy to finally have because, again, I already thought I had it. Speaking of cabins in the woods, we've got The Cabin in the Woods. Uh, so this is a 2011 film, uh, and again, another one that I sort of thought I already had, um, <laughs> but apparently did not. This is uh, a very cool movie. Uh, I don't want to talk about it in any sort of detail at all, because I don't want to spoil what this movie is, because it's probably not what you expect. There is a cabin in the woods, it is a horror film, but it, it's a lot more than that. Um, so, I don't want to say more than that, but I really enjoy this movie, and it's also got a lenticular slipcover, which is always fun. Then we've got Candyman. So this is the 2021 uh, version, or kind of sequel, sort of reboot sequel, um, starring uh, Yahya Abdul-Mateen II directed by Nia DaCosta, um, and I enjoyed this movie, uh, not as much as I had hoped I would, but I did enjoy it. I do have a review for this one up on the channel. Uh, this, like I said, is kind of this long, uh, delayed sequel to, uh, the, the first film, or I should say it's a sequel that's set quite a while after the events of the first movie, the 1992 Candyman, which I do really enjoy. Also have a review for that one up. Um, but this one, um, I, I liked it, but I didn't think it had that kind of mystery and intrigue that really drew me into the first movie. Uh, this takes a more straightforward kind of horror slasher approach, which isn't necessarily a bad thing, um, just, just a little bit different than the first one. Speaking of a little different from Candyman, <laughs> we've got Carol, which is a 2015 movie. Um, it kind of bothers me because the disc is loose in here, so I, I really want to open this to fix that, but I also don't want to open it till I watch it. Uh, the, the trouble with OCD, right? Um, so this is a period piece romantic drama set in the 1950s based on a novel called The Price of Salt by Patricia Highsmith. Um, and so this stars uh, Kate Blanchett and Rooney Mara as these two women who kind of develop uh, this this relationship in 1950s New York. Um, another one that I was kind of surprised that I didn't already have on Blu-ray, um, but it, I've, I've been kind of, after I realized I didn't have it, uh, I was kind of keeping an eye on it, and this one was another one that never really dropped in price much, um, so I figured might as well just get it now. <laughs> uh, speaking of just getting it now, we got Chicken Little. <laughs> Uh, so this is from 2005. Uh, this is one of Disney's uh, animated feature-length films, right? One of the main um, movies. But uh, it, it's not one that I had. There's very few of those uh, Disney features that I don't own, uh, mostly in this mid to late 2000s time period. Uh, I did see this when it first came out once. Uh, I don't remember enjoying it very much. Uh, granted, I, I wasn't, like, super into wanting to see it at the time. I kind of got dragged to it. Um, so we'll, we'll see. It's been a long time. I've never really liked the chicken little story anyway, but, um, figured I'd add it to my Blu-ray collection, especially since it was pretty cheap on Black Friday. Speaking of cheap on Black Friday, we've got Clifford the Big Red Dog. Uh, so this came out a couple years ago, 2021. I have not heard particularly good things about this movie, but that being said, I used to really, really like Clifford when I was a little kid. Um, and so I kind of, I have this little nostalgic connection to, to the story at least. Um, we'll see how that translates to this movie version, but for, you know, $4.99 or whatever it was, it, uh, it was worth the pickup. Next, we've got Close Encounters of the Third Kind. Uh, another one, I know I've said this probably five times already, but another one that I was really surprised I didn't already own. Uh, so this is a Steven Spielberg film from 1977, and it's this very interesting uh, sort of sci-fi mystery uh, movie. It, it, it's about aliens, it's about UFOs, but it's not... 
it's probably, if you've never seen it, it's probably not what you're anticipating it being. Uh, it's, it's much more slower paced and a much more thoughtful film um, than, than kind of the classic alien invasion, blow em up explosion kind of movie. Um, so I, I really like this one. Uh, it's got a very memorable score. Um, and so I'm really happy to have this. Uh, and this is actually the 40th anniversary edition, so it's got some really interesting um, special features that I'm also uh, excited to check out. Then we've got The Contractor. Um, so this came out last year in 2022. <clears throat> It's kind of this action thriller uh, about spies and conspiracies and contracts, contract killer kind of things. It stars Chris Pine, Ben Foster. I don't really know too much about it other than that. Um, but it, again, pretty cheap and it looked like one that would probably be at least entertaining. Probably not the best, uh, best of films, but at least uh, uh, okay for, you know, spending a couple hours on. Next, we've got Copycat. Uh, so this is a 1995 film that stars Sigourney Weaver and Holly Hunter, uh, and it's this crime thriller movie. Basically, these two women are trying to track down a serial killer who, who kind of steals the M.O. of other serial killers, right? So he's a copycat killer, making him really hard to... Um, hard to find and hard to track down. Uh, so this one uh, is a fun one, um, so I'm glad to have that on Blu-ray. Next, we've got The Courier. Uh, so this came out a couple years ago in 2020, um, and it's one that I almost saw. I did want to go see it, but it never came out in Maine. Uh, so I never got a chance to see it in theaters, and then I honestly kind of forgot about it, because uh, nobody was really talking about it. Um, but I spotted it on Black Friday, and I was like, definitely gonna grab it. Um, this is uh, kind of like A Call to Spy. This is this historical spy thriller that, that's based, or at least inspired by a true story. Basically, Benedict Cumberbatch's character um, gets recruited um, to, to, to try to help end the Cuban Missile Crisis. Next, we've got Dangerous. Um, so, like uh, The Contractor, this seems like kind of one of these just ridiculous sort of throwaway action thrillers that uh, I'm sure is is not a particularly well-made film, <laughs> at least in, in terms of, uh, you know, high cinema. Uh, but it, it seems like it might be fun to some extent. Uh, we've got a bunch of mercenaries on some remote island, so it seems like there's going to be a lot of action mayhem. Um, stars Scott Eastwood, Mel Gibson, Tyrese, or, well, yeah, Mel and Tyrese Gibson, uh, no relation. Um, so we'll we'll see uh, see how that one is. So next, I've got Deliverance. Uh, so unlike those last couple movies, I have seen this one. Uh, it's John Borman's 1972 film, and so this stars John Voight, Burt Reynolds, uh, Ned Beatty, and Ronnie Cox as these four guys who go on a rafting trip, a river rafting trip, but they encounter a little bit more than they anticipated. Um, so it's kind of this uh, pretty intense, frequently dark film. Um, it's a survival movie, but not just survival in nature and against, it, uh, against the elements. There's some more... Uh, some more kind of darker things that are going on in this movie. Um, there's actually a, I've been, I've been waiting to get this movie for quite a while. There's a Digibook version um, that just has never dropped in price. Um, and, and I was just, I waited too long for that one. And I was like, what am I doing? What am I waiting for? I'll at least to get uh, this kind of regular edition. <laughs> Next is Demolition Man. Um, so this is a 1993 sci-fi action thriller. Um, I've never seen this movie, but uh, I do know that it stars Sylvester Stallone and Wesley Snipes and has cryogenics and, and so all sorts of crazy kind of early 90s action stuff going on. Uh, so curious to finally watch this one because I've, I've been aware of it for uh, a long, long time, but for, for some reason never, never watched it. 
Speaking of never watching, uh, I've got Dirty Harry. Um, so this is actually the Dirty Harry collection. So all five films in the franchise are here. Um, I, I have no excuse for at least never having seen the first movie, um, but now I'll be able to see all five of these Clint Eastwood films. So we've got the first one, Dirty Harry, uh, Magnum Force, The Enforcer, Sudden Impact, and The Deadpool. So all five in here. Uh, no more, no more excuses not to have seen Dirty Harry. And we've got Disobedience. Uh, so this is Sebastian Lelio's 2017 film. Uh, and, and I saw this in theaters and really enjoyed it. This is actually my favorite of Lelio's films. Uh, so it's a romantic drama with the Rachels, uh, Rachel Weisz and Rachel McAdams. Um, and I... I had wanted to pick this up uh, for a while, and again, not really sure why I didn't, um, but I was looking forward to rewatching this one because I did like it, and it's been like six years now since I saw it, so time for a rewatch. Uh, next, we've got Dog. So this is a 2022 movie, just came out, uh, and it, it looks like it's probably going to be just one of those kind of dumb but fun comedies. So we've got Channing Tatum and a dog. Um, so, I, I, you know, I think it has some comedic potential, but it could also possibly be kind of annoying. I don't know. We'll see. I remember watching the, the trailers a lot uh, and, and previews like on, on TV commercials. Um, so we'll see how this one is. Speaking of seeing the trailers a ton, we've got Elvis here, which is a new movie, 2022, that I have not seen yet, but definitely have to watch sooner rather than later, because I expect it's going to be up for at least a couple categories for the Oscars in the next uh, month or two here. Uh, so this is directed by Boz Lerman, who I kind of have mixed, uh, mixed opinions on his movies, uh, and it's a biopic about Elvis Presley. Much like uh, Baz Luhrmann, I'm, I'm not huge on Elvis either, but uh, I, I'm curious. I, I don't know this aspect of his story and his manager and that relationship, and I've heard really good things about Austin Butler's performance, uh, so I'm, I'm curious to check this one out. Speaking of curious, we've got Emily the Criminal. So I've been looking forward to this one for quite a while. Uh, this is another 2022 movie. Uh, and this premiered at Sundance last January, and I've been looking forward to it ever since then. Um, and I, I got the Blu-ray um, during Black Friday, or might have been Cyber Monday. Uh, but then right after I ordered the movie, I got a screener for it. And I was like, well, I just ordered the movie, so I, I didn't watch the screener <laughs> um, because I knew the Blu-ray was on the way. Um, so this is an Aubrey Plaza film. It's kind of this crime thriller. That's all I know about it. I've really avoided looking into the plot too much, um, so I'm, I'm excited to watch this one. And next we've got Escape Plan. Uh, so this is a 2013 film starring Sylvester Stallone and uh, Arnold Schwarzenegger. Haven't seen this one, um, but I do, I do remember the, the, the trailers for it, and I remember thinking it had uh, some potential, or looked like it had some potential. Uh, basically, we've got this guy who, his job is to design prisons, and design uh, escape-proof prisons. And then he gets framed for a crime and thrown into one of the prisons he designed, uh, and has to figure out a way how to escape that prison, and then clear his name. Um, so, action thriller. With these two guys, probably, uh, probably at least, uh, entertaining, um, at, at minimum. <laughs> so next we've got Family Plot, which is a 1976 Alfred Hitchcock movie. It's actually his last film, uh, that he, that he made before he died. Um, and you're gonna see, uh, quite a few Hitchcock movies pop up in this haul. Um, I, I re I'm a really big fan of Hitchcock, and I've seen the vast majority of his movies, but I, uh, I apparently didn't have a lot of his uh, lesser-known ones, and even a few of his pretty well-known ones on Blu-ray. I thought I did, because I do have a lot of Hitchcock movies, but um, now I have a lot more. Uh, anyway, this one, not one of my favorites of his, uh, probably one of his lesser films, uh, but it's okay. 
But I gotta say, I was really surprised that it was released in 4K. Uh, and that I don't think there's even a regular Blu-ray release. I think it's just 4K. And I really don't understand why this movie, of any Hitchcock movies, and there are a few others that are kind of like, what? Why, why is this 4K? But, hey, I got 4K family plot. <laughs> Uh, another 4K here, not Hitchcock, uh, is Fantastic Beasts, uh, Secret of Dumbledore. Our secrets. Multiple. Plural secrets. Um, so this came out last year, 2022, uh, and it's the third film in the Fantastic Beasts, uh, franchise. That's kind of this offshoot of the Harry Potter franchise. Um, it's okay. I, I, it was better than I thought it was gonna be. Not great, not my favorite for sure. Uh, better than the second film, <clears throat> not as good as the first one to me. Certainly not enough Fantastic Beasts. I, I think this franchise should have really, really focused in on that aspect, um, but it, it, it hasn't all that much. There are some Fantastic Beasts here. Uh, but I had the other two in this, uh, this Fantastic Beasts franchise, so of course I had to get this one too. Next up is Free Fire. So this is a 2016 Ben Wheatley movie that I had heard so much about for years and years and years and just never got around to watching it until, uh, I don't even know when it was, a couple months ago. This summer sometime, maybe even, might have even been September, I don't remember. <laughs> um, but I really liked this. Uh, it's just, it's basically just one big giant shootout. Uh, it's a 1970s set film um, taking place in Boston, and it's basically this gun deal gone wrong. Got a big cast. We've got Brie Larson, Charlotte Copley, Army Hammer, Killian Murphy, whole bunch of other people. Uh, and it's, it's brutal, it's bloody, um, and it's just, it's a lot of fun if, if you go in just wanting a, a shootout kind of film. And I did when I saw it, and that's what I got, and so I'm excited to get that again. <laughs> Next we've got The French Dispatch. Uh, so this came out last year, 2022, directed by Wes Anderson. Um, and I believe this is the only Wes Anderson film that I have not seen, and also the only Wes Anderson film that I don't have on Blu-ray, uh, largely because the Criterion Collection loves him, uh, and has released almost everything. I think every movie except for Isle of Dogs is, and this now, has been released in the Criterion Collection. I'm sure this will come at some point, um, but I haven't seen this yet. I have heard it's a very, it's a very Wes Anderson-y Wes Anderson film, um, so we'll see how I feel about it, but I'm at least mildly curious to check it out. Okay, we've got another Hitchcock movie here. So this is Frenzy, part of this Alfred Hitchcock masterpiece series. So not 4K here. Um, this was his second to last film in 1972. Uh, this one's a little bit better, I think, than Family Plot. Uh, we've got kind of this wrong man thriller here. Um, not not a great one. He's he's got a lot of wrong man thrillers, um, and and a lot that are much better than this. But I I do. I do enjoy this one. I've only seen it, I think I've only seen this one once before. Um, so it's, it's good that I have this so I can rewatch it now. Then we've got From Here to Eternity. So this is a 1953 film starring Burt Lancaster, uh, Montgomery Clift, Deborah Kerr, uh, Donna Reed. Uh, this actually won Best Picture that year. Uh, and it's sort of this, it's more of a war drama than anything else. There is this romantic element to it, uh, and that's probably the most well-known part of it, um, which is why they've got it on the, the cover here. This scene with the, the kiss on the beach with the waves crashing over them. Everybody knows that scene, even if they don't know what movie it's from. It's this movie. Um, but it's definitely more of a, a war drama than it is a romance. Um, but it's, it's pretty good, and it's been a while since I watched it, um, so... Uh, good thing that I have this now. And I, I get to have another Best Picture winner on Blu-ray. Next, we've got Fury. Uh, so this is a 1936 film uh, directed by Fritz Lang. Uh, and I've watched and own a couple other Fritz Lang movies, but I've never seen this one. Uh, so we've got another Spencer Tracy movie here. Already had uh, Bad Day at Black Rock before. 
Um, so we've got this one, Wrong Man Thriller, uh, sort of a revenge thriller though. Uh, part of the Warner Archive collection here. Got a few more of those uh, mixed in uh, with the rest of the haul. But I, I've heard of this one and have been looking forward to seeing it. So now I get to. <laughs> so a little bit different. We've got Ghost Rider Spirit of Vengeance. So this is Ghost Rider 2. Um, this, is, this is not a great movie from my recollection. Um, not that the first Ghost Rider is a great movie, but I have I have a bit of a soft spot for that one, uh, the 2007 uh, movie. This one came out uh, when I was in college, and I went to see it with some of my friends, like, sophomore year, I think, maybe junior year, I think sophomore year. Um, honestly, I don't remember too much about it, other than I know I saw it in the theater. I have not seen it since. Um, and so it was really cheap on Black Friday and it's like it's the 3D Blu-ray version. It's got a lenticular slipcover. So I was like, what the heck? I'll get it and <laughs> have uh, have the whole Ghost Rider collection on Blu-ray now. Uh, next is Ghostbusters Afterlife. Uh, so this came out uh, in 2021 and this is the fourth film in the Ghostbusters franchise. The third in the, the sequence uh, that of connected films. So this is a direct sequel set like 30 years after the events of Ghostbusters 2. Uh, so th this is a lot of fun, uh, very nostalgic, uh, very made for the fans with a lot of things that people who like the first two Ghostbusters are going to appreciate. Um, so I, you know, I was looking forward to picking this up anyway, but we've got supposedly a sequel to this version, this Ghostbusters Afterlife coming this December. Um, so it'll be good to have this on hand to rewatch before that movie comes out. Next up is Halloween Ends. So we've got the Best Buy exclusive Steelbook here, um, which is a pretty, pretty cool looking one. A little bit, uh, maybe a little bit cooler than the film itself. But um, this came out last year, 2022. Uh, closes out the David Gordon Green trilogy, uh, sort of reboot sequel trilogy uh, to the Halloween franchise. This movie was okay. I, I think I liked this more than than most people or most critics seem to. Um, it, it's a weird one as the, the closure or closing film of this trilogy. Doesn't really make sense as that, but if this was kind of its own standalone sequel here it would have been fine uh but i you know i now that i know what it is that it is kind of this different story than anticipated i i'm curious to rewatch it uh because i think having that knowledge might might make it more enjoyable the second time so <laughs> this next one here hey arnold the movie uh this was definitely not a film i was uh, expecting to be buying on Black Friday or, or at any time really. I didn't even know it was on Blu-ray. Very surprised that it's on Blu-ray. Um, so this is a 2002 film. This was the first of I believe only two Hey Arnold movies that came out based on the Hey Arnold TV show, the, the cartoon, uh, the Nick cartoon. I used to really like this show when I was a kid uh, and I do know that I saw both movies. Um, it was this one and there's like a jungle movie too. Though, to be honest, I don't remember this movie at all. Like, I, I couldn't tell you what happens in it. Though, I suspect when I watch it, I'll be like, oh yeah, okay. I remember this, but I, I right now I can't distinguish it from the TV show. Um, but uh, yeah, we'll see. Um, got my Hey Arnold movie. <laughs> so switching gears a little bit from Hey Arnold, we've got I Confess which is a 1953 Alfred Hitchcock film. So this is one of the fairly few Hitchcock films that I haven't seen. I think there's like five or six probably that I've never seen before. This is one of them. Um, so this stars Montgomery Clift and Anne Baxter. And this one sounds really interesting. Uh, probably one of the more compelling premises of, of a Hitchcock film or unique premises of a Hitchcock film. Uh, so basically, Montgomery Clift plays a priest, and he is now the suspect of a murder investigation. 
but he he's being wrongfully accused of this murder. He didn't actually commit it. But his, uh, he, he can't clear his name because either, it's either his alibi or he, you know, he knows who the killer is. I don't know exactly the situation, but whatever it is, he can't tell the police and clear his name because that information came under the seal of the confessional. So he can't, you know, break his priestly vows or whatever. Um, and so I'm really, uh, curious to see what becomes of, uh, Montgomery Clift's priest in this film. Next, we've got Infinite. Uh, so this came out a few years back, 2021. I remember it was a movie I kind of had my eye on for a few years. It was one that got pushed back a number of times. Um, directed by Antoine Fuqua uh, and stars Mark Wahlberg and Chiwetel Ejiofor. Uh, it's supposed to be kind of a sci-fi action thriller. We've got Mark Wahlberg as this guy who somehow has all these skills that he never learned and he has these memories that he doesn't know where they came from. And so it's kind of the sci-fi thing. So probably not the best movie, but at least sounds interesting. Speaking of not the best, but sounds interesting or potentially entertaining, we've got Jexy. Uh, so this came out 2019 and it, basically it sounds like a sort of comedy spoof or take on the movie Her. Uh, so Adam Devine's character gets a Jexy, uh, phone or device or something, and it's this operating system, this AI operating system that interacts with him, but then it gets jealous, um, and starts to, starts to do funny things in his life, I guess. Um, so curious, haven't heard great things about this one, um, but I, I do remember the trailers and they seemed kind of interesting, uh, so we'll see. Now we've got Jingle All the Way. So this is a 1996 Christmas comedy starring Arnold Schwarzenegger. Uh, and it's, it's about what you would expect from his comedy, um, comedy era. This was a movie I saw a handful of times as a kid, but it was never one that kind of became a Christmas go-to for us. Um, it's been a long time since I watched it. Uh, and I never had it on Blu-ray, never had it on DVD, so... It was pretty cheap uh, on Black Friday heading into the Christmas season, so I figure might as well pick it up. Next, we've got Jurassic World Dominion. Uh, so this came out last year, 2022, another film directed by Colin Trevorrow. Uh, so this is the third film in the Jurassic World uh, franchise and the sixth film in the overall Jurassic Park franchise. Um, I I kind of enjoyed this one. Uh, it definitely gets a uh, pretty bad rap, uh, I think, for most people. And it wasn't the greatest movie ever. It had a lot more potential that it didn't capitalize on, I think. Uh, but it kind of had this nostalgic thing, bringing some of the main characters from the first film back again. Uh, and, you know, it was definitely better than Fallen Kingdom. Uh, so I, I'm curious to check it out again, and I know this has the extended edition, so we'll see if that, um, has anything extra. Hopefully it'll at least have that drive-in, uh, scene that we saw in the, the trailers that weren't actually in the movie. Um, next we've got The Kings of Staten Island. So this is a 2020 Judd Apatow movie, uh, starring Pete Davidson. Uh, so those, you know, Judd Apatow and Pete Davidson, not huge fans of either of them, their movies. Um, but this one, I, I was surprised by how much I enjoyed it. It wasn't, it wasn't a favorite of mine, but I did like it. Uh, I got a screener for this a few years back, and so watched it with not much, uh, in terms of expectations, and it was, it was somewhat funny, but definitely a lot more heartfelt than I anticipated. Uh, so I was waiting for it to drop, um, to a fairly low price and it finally did. So figured I would pick it up. Next we've got Last Night in Soho. So this was a 2021 film directed by Edgar Wright. And this was actually my favorite movie of 2021. So I do have a review up for this one. Um, and I really, really liked this movie. Uh, it's wild. It's kind of this mystery thriller with some horror elements, but not a ton, but it, it's giallo inspired. It's this time bending psychological thriller. 
just really cool, really interesting, and I've been dying to rewatch it. Uh, so I finally, finally gra grabbed it and got it on 4K. So excited. <laughs> so next is Licorice Pizza. Uh, so this came out in 2021, uh, however, it was my first movie of 2022. So I saw this in theaters uh, on January 1st last year in 2022. Uh, directed by Paul Thomas Anderson. Um, it's, it's an okay one. I've never been huge on his movies, um, but I am curious to rewatch it now that I kind of know what to expect and, and maybe have more... I guess just appropriate expectations for the film. I think I might like it a little bit more with that in mind. Next up is Lightyear. Uh, so this came out last year, 2022. I do have a review for it up on the channel. Uh, and this is kind of a spin-off within the Toy Story franchise. Um, but it it's better than it sounds. Um, so it's kind of unique. Uh, basically, Lightyear is the is the movie within the franchise. So kind of within the Toy Story universe. This is the film that, you know, eight-year-old or five-year-old Andy saw and then wanted the toy for. Um, so that, that's kind of a unique, a unique thing, I think. Uh, and, and it was better than maybe I expected it to be, because I really love the Toy Story franchise, and when I heard we were going to be getting a Buzz Lightyear movie, I was kind of like, oh, what are they doing? But it, it was better than anticipated, um, and, and I think better than a lot of people give it credit for, so I'm definitely happy to have it on Blu-ray, or 4K. Next up is The Lost City. Uh, so this one, uh, I saw in theaters, do have a review for it up on the channel. It's it was better than expected. Um, so this stars Sandra Bullock and Channing Tatum. Sandra Bullock is this romance author um, who writes these like adventure romances. Her uh, cover model is Channing Tatum and they end up actually in the real jungle and having to survive and kind of go through this whole adventure together. Uh, it sounds silly and it is silly. Um, it has a very early 2000s romantic comedy kind of vibe to it. But like I said, it was a lot better than I expected. These two have much uh, better chemistry than I expected them to have. Uh, and apparently this has over 50 minutes of hilarious bonus content. So uh, we'll see the, the extra hilarity that I get from the Blu-ray. Next is Lullaby of Broadway. Uh, so this is a movie that I know nothing about, basically. Uh, I know that it's from 1951, stars Doris Day. Um, I think it's a musical. It sure looks like a musical from the cover. Um, but other than that, I have no idea. Uh, so why do I have this? Well, I was very confused by how cheap it was on Black Friday. So this is a Warner Archive collection film, um, which is kind of... A, a boutique label within Warner Brothers, um, and usually these movies, they're not, they're not usually as expensive as, like, Criterion films, but they're usually decently expensive, like, in the high, high teens, like, 17, 18 is, like, a, you know, around where you would see it, especially if it was on sale, you know, drops down into maybe the low teens. This was, like, six dollars, so I have no idea why it was as cheap as it was. I don't know if it's going out of stock and they were just trying to unload all the extra copies or what, but I jumped on it just because of how cheap it was. Um, so who knows? We'll see what this one's like. Next up is The Majestic. So I have seen this movie and I do really like this one. Uh, it's a 2001 film directed by Frank Darabont, who did a lot of Stephen King adaptations that I really like as well. Um, and this stars Jim Carrey. Uh, and there's also a bunch of uh, people from other uh, Frank Darabont movies in here, especially from The Mist, uh, which is one of my favorites of his. A lot of people, a lot of actors uh, from that uh, in this movie as well. But this is a period piece set in the 1950s. Jim Carrey is a screenwriter um, during the, the blacklisting era. Um, and he ends up getting amnesia and winds up in this town where he's, um, you know, people believe he's, um, uh, somebody who's been gone from that town for like a decade, uh, and maybe he is, we don't know. Um, well, I know, but if you haven't seen the movie, you don't know. Um, but basically, 
it's a movie for people who love movies. It's not about making movies, but it's about watching them and enjoying them. And the Majestic is actually the movie theater in this town. Uh, so this is a really, uh, this is a movie I really enjoy. Speaking of movies I really enjoy, we've got The Man Who Knew Too Much. So this is the 1956 version of this film, another Alfred Hitchcock movie, part of the Alfred Hitchcock Masterpiece series. Uh, so I already have the original, the first movie, the 1934 Man Who Knew Too Much. That's a Criterion Collection film. I've had that for a long time. Uh, but I didn't have this uh, remake. So Hitchcock actually remade his own film. Uh, and this 50s version, I think, is actually the superior version. So this stars Jimmy Stewart and Doris Day as this couple who are on vacation. Uh, I believe they go to Morocco in this version. But they kind of stumble across this assassination plot and it becomes this whole thing and they get pulled into uh, some, some espionage and, and kind of kidnapping and all sorts of things. Uh, so this one's a fun one. I uh, had no excuse for why I didn't already own this one, so now, now I've got it. One that I have a little bit of an excuse for not having previously owned is Marnie. So another Hitchcock movie, and just like Family Plot earlier, I have no idea why this is on 4K. Um, but whatever. <laughs> um, so this is a 1964 movie starring Tippi Hedren and Sean Connery as a married couple. Uh, Tippi Hedren's character uh, is kind of a thief, and she ends up getting blackmailed, and there's this whole kind of dark underlying plot to it. It's it's not a top-tier Hitchcock movie for me, but I, I do enjoy this one, so I'm glad I have it, and I've got it on 4K, because that's, that's going to be useful for this movie. <laughs> um, next is Men. Uh, so this is a 2022 film. Um, I do have a review for it up on the channel. Directed by Alex Garland. Uh, so this is his third film after Ex Machina and Annihilation. Uh, so I was really looking forward to this because I love both of those other movies. And I also enjoyed this one. I don't like it as much as the other two, but I do like it. Uh, it's a weird movie though. It's definitely a bit out there. Very atmospheric, very psychological creepy, weird, unsettling, um, but uh, very thematically dense, very thematic theme forward um, kind of movie. So uh, we'll see, see what it's like on rewatch, especially knowing what ends up happening in the film. Next is Moonfall. Uh, so this is a 2022 Roland Emmerich movie. I also have a review for this up on the channel. Uh, and so this is a disaster movie, you know, about as Roland, Roland Emmerich-y Emmerich as you can get. Um, you know, Moonfall. The moon falls. Like, it tells you right in the name what's gonna happen. It's stupid, it's dumb, it's big, it's over the top, but it's kind of fun. Uh, at least in parts. Uh, so happy to have this, uh, join my, uh, collection of other ridiculous Roland Emmerich disaster movies. Then we've got Nope. Uh, so this is the third film by Jordan Peele as director, um, following up Get Out and Us. Uh, and this is more of a sci-fi uh, movie than a horror film. Get Out was more thriller, Us was more kind of thriller horror, and this is more sci-fi thriller. Uh, it's I enjoyed this one. I, I do like his other two films a little bit better. Um, this is the uh, the Best Buy, at least I believe it's the Best Buy um, exclusive steelbook. At least it's a steelbook. Um, and so I, I like this. It had this mystery component to it and I really liked how everything ended up coming together. Um, very excited to, to look at this uh, one again and to watch some of these special features. Then we've got The Northman. Uh, so this is another 2022 film. I have not seen this one yet, though. Directed by Robert Eggers. Um, I have had pretty mixed opinions on his past films. And this is one that, to be honest, I really wasn't looking forward to. I know a lot of people were super psyched about it when it came out. Seemed like uh, people enjoyed it. You know, we've got Alexander Skarsgård, Nicole Kidman, Anya Taylor-Joy. Bunch of people in this. Um, I, you know, I'm, I'm gonna go in with, you know, hope, 
that it's gonna be good. Seems like uh, basically Viking Hamlet to me, at least based on the trailers, but we'll see uh, how the actual movie is. Next is On the Basis of Sex. Uh, so this is a 2018 film, uh, and this is kind of a, a limited scope biopic about Ruth Bader Ginsburg. Um, so it, it doesn't cover the entirety of her life, but instead it focuses on um, kind of her her up and coming uh, to to significance uh, in in the the law um, kind of realm. Uh, so basically when she was in law school and then her arguing her first cases uh, about gender discrimination. So this is before she becomes a judge, before she becomes a Supreme Court justice. Um, but I really enjoyed this. I saw this a number of years back. Um, so excited to watch it again. Felicity Jones does a really good job as RBG. Um, and I am also excited to look, uh, to, to check out the bonus features on this one too. Next we've got, uh, much like Lullabies of Broadway, a film that I don't know much about, got because it was pretty cheap on Black Friday. I have heard the name, Paris When It Sizzles, um, but I've never seen it. So this is a film with Audrey Hepburn and William Holden, kind of reuniting a few years after Sabrina, because uh, they co-starred in that with Humphrey Bogart. So this is 1964, kind of a romantic comedy. William Holden, uh, from my understanding, plays a screenwriter who's kind of, you know, this drunk guy, lazy, he hasn't done what he was supposed to do, and so he hires her as a temporary secretary to kind of get him on track and make sure he meets his deadline, and romantic comedy ensues. Then we've got Professor Marston and the Wonder Women. So I saw this movie in theaters back in 2017. That was back in the movie pass heyday. Uh, so I, I do remember going uh, and watching this one. Uh, and this is a I really liked it, but it's a weird movie. Uh, it's a story that I never knew about, uh, based on a true story, um, based on the guy who uh, came up with Wonder Woman as, as a character. Um, and so it's about his development of that character and kind of the trajectory that his career took to lead him there, but also about his relationship with his wife and their mutual girlfriend. Um, so it's kind of this um, romantic drama uh, with Luke Evans, Rebecca Hall, and Bella Heathcote. Next up is Resistance. Um, so much like the very first movie uh, that I covered in this haul, A Call to Spy, uh, this is a historical spy drama, um, war drama, and it was another one that I saw the screener for, I got a screener for and watched uh, a couple years back, because this is a 2020 movie. Uh, but based on a true story, uh, Jesse Eisenberg stars as Marcel Marceau, uh, and uh, he was a kind of popular mime, you know, if, you, if you're not into the mime culture, that's who he was, or what he's known for, but he actually, prior to kind of becoming this well-known mime, um, he got recruited to, to work with the French Resistance uh, and actually saved like a whole bunch of orphans, like thousands of orphans in France during World War II. Um, so this is about his um, involvement with that. Next is Rio Bravo. So this is a 1959 Howard Hawks film, and I'm embarrassed to admit that I've never seen this movie. Uh, it's one that I have been aware of for as long as I've been into movies. Just never got around to seeing it. John Wayne, Dean Martin, Ricky Nelson. Um, just uh, a, a very well-known, very popular, very influential Western that I really need to watch and we'll soon rectify that. And we've got Roadhouse. Uh, so this is a 1989 uh, sort of romantic action drama. Um, basically Patrick Swayze plays uh, a, a bouncer who kind of gets hired to clean up this really rough bar, um, rough in terms of clientele. Uh, and he gets into this relationship and then there's all sorts of drama with um, people in the town and, and rivals and things. Um, 
over the top, kind of silly, very, very 80s, late 80s, but it, you know, it's, I remember being surprised the first time I watched this movie, because I had heard about it for so long, and it was kind of like, oh, it's gonna be that kind of movie, and then it, it was better than that kind of movie, <laughs> um, so finally picked it up on Blu-ray. Another Hitchcock movie, uh, and another one that I have no excuse for not having owned before now, and that is Rope. So we've got another of the Alfred Hitchcock masterpiece series here. Uh, another Jimmy Stewart uh, Hitchcock film. This is 1948, uh, probably the most well-known of the Hitchcock Blu-rays that I got uh, in this haul. Um, so it's about the the perfect crime and these people trying to prove that they uh, committed the perfect crime. Uh, so I don't want to give away anything that happens in this, but it, it's a pretty cool film. It's a single location uh, mystery thriller. Uh, and it's also pretty unique in the sense that it is a simulated single take film. So everything happens in just one long take. Obviously there are moments where there's hidden cuts, but uh, pretty cool for 1948. Next we've got another Hitchcock movie and another 4K one that's a little bit surprising but slightly less surprising than the other surprising 4K Hitchcocks, and that's Saboteur. Uh, so this is a 1942 film, and this is another wrong man thriller. Uh, this guy gets accused of being an arson, which, um, and in the, the resulting fire killed his best friend, and so he goes on the run, and it's this uh, um, pretty, pretty good movie. Uh, so it's Robert Cummings as the, the wrong man in this movie. Um, and this is one that I enjoyed, haven't seen it in a while, um, so happy to have it on 4K. Next is a movie I referenced a little bit ago, and that is Sabrina. Um, so this is one that, again, a little embarrassed to say that I have not watched it yet, uh, but it's a 1954 Billy Wilder movie. So this stars Audrey Hepburn, William Holden, and Humphrey Bogart, and it's this romantic comedy that's sort of this uh, love triangle among these three, um, these three, well, the three characters. Next, we've got Saving Mr. Banks. So this came out about a decade ago. I think this was a 2013 movie, and I actually haven't seen it yet. Um, it, it was one that I wanted to watch when it came out, and I don't know why I never got around to it, but I didn't. Um, and so this, uh, stars Tom Hanks and Emma Thompson as Walt Disney and P.L. Travers, respectively. Um, and it's about sort of the making or the lead up to the making of Mary Poppins, the movie adaptation of Mary Poppins and kind of the, the relationship between the author, P.L. Travers and Walt Disney and kind of everything that went into, uh, the eventual adaptation, film adaptation of Mary Poppins. Next is a, another 2022 film. So this is Scream. So this is the fifth film in the Scream franchise. I actually haven't watched this yet. Um, I know a lot of people, many of my friends and, and critic friends really, really enjoyed this. Um, so I'm looking forward to it but haven't seen it yet, even though I do like the Scream franchise as a whole. Uh, I know we've got a Scream 6 coming out um, soon, next year, I think. Um, so definitely gonna have to watch this one uh, in preparation for that. Next is Searching. So this came out in 2018. It's this um, kind of thriller film, this mystery thriller starring John Cho. Uh, in the movie, his character's daughter goes missing and he kind of takes it upon himself to investigate her disappearance uh, after the, the police aren't finding any leads. I haven't seen this yet. I've heard many, many good things, but I've heard only vague things because I know there's, I think it's one that's pretty easy to spoil and I haven't been spoiled on it. So I should watch this sooner rather than later. So I remain unspoiled. Next is another film I've heard very good things about, and that's Shin Godzilla. So I haven't seen this one. Came out in 2016. 
Um, I recently, in like October, November, was on a bit of a Godzilla kick. I finally watched my Criterion Showa era uh, uh, Godzilla box set, or not really a box, but the set, uh, Spy Number 1000. Um, and so I, you know, that was like 15 Godzilla movies, uh, and got another one, why not? I heard really good things about this, um, so curious, uh, how it is. Next is Sonic the Hedgehog 2. Uh, so this is a 2022 film. I do have a review for it up on the channel, uh, and I liked this one. You know, it... I was really surprised by how much I enjoyed the first Sonic movie, and this one is kind of right on par with that. Um, it's it's silly, but like it's entertaining. Uh, and this one incorporates some more from the games. Uh, so we've got um, um, Knuckles, Idris Elba uh, as Knuckles is pretty entertaining, and we've got Colleen O'Shaughnessy herself playing Tails, so that's pretty cool too. Next is Sorry to Bother You, uh, 2018 film, I've heard, again, a lot of good, uh, buzz about this movie, but I've yet to see it, um, seems like there's, there's a lot more to this than I think I'm expecting, uh, so I don't really know much about it, uh, and again, trying to remain unspoiled until I actually watch it. Now we've got Spider-Man No Way Home. Uh, so this was a 2021 movie that I saw, have a review for it up on the channel. This was directed by John Watts, again, the third of his uh, MCU Spider-Man trilogy, um, starring Tom Holland uh, and a lot of other people in this movie. Um, this one is a multiverse story. Uh, very nostalgic, very crowd-pleasing for anybody who's been a fan of Spider-Man and Spider-Man movies over the last two decades. Um, excited to rewatch this one because it, it was a lot of fun in the theater. Next, we've got another Alfred Hitchcock movie. Surprise, surprise. And that is Stage Fright. So this is a 1950 film, another Warner Archive collection movie. And another Hitchcock movie that I have not seen. Um, so again, we're kind of in the dwindling numbers of Hitchcocks that I haven't seen before. This is one of them. I know uh, stars Jane Wyman and Marlene Dietrich. Uh, and that there's another kind of wrong man sort of thriller going on here. Um, that Jane Wyman's friend uh, is accused of, I believe, murdering Marlene Dietrich's husband. Um, but, you know, so they, they have to kind of figure out who, who actually did it uh, and, and get the right man, because he's the wrong man. Next is Stillwater. So this was a 2022 film. I didn't see this one. Matt Damon um, as kind of this grizzled sort of guy, I guess. Um, but he has a daughter who is in prison, accused of, I think, murder, but accused of some sort of crime in France. Um, and so it's about this father-son, or father-son, father-daughter relationship, uh, and him kind of trying to exonerate her, and he goes to France, and it's, I don't know, it seems like it, it could potentially be good. Uh, I like Matt Damon, so... We'll see. Another Hitchcock movie. Uh, so much like The Man Who Knew Too Much and Rope, this is another one of his movies that I should have gotten a long time ago. I really like this. This is this is kind of mid to top tier Hitchcock for me. Strangers on a Train. Uh, interestingly enough, this is the second film in this haul video uh, that's based on a novel by uh, Patty Highsmith. Um, but this one, uh, is another kind of perfect crime sort of story, and it's about these two guys, these two strangers who, who come up with a plot to, uh, to commit some murders. Uh, so I really like this one. Long overdue for having it on Blu-ray. Next, I've got another, uh, steelbook, and that is for Stripes. So this is an Ivan Reitman film, 1981. Uh, and it stars uh, Bill Murray and uh, Harold Ramis, and they join the army. Um, so it's 
it, it's definitely um, a film of its time period, uh, but it does have a lot that's kind of entertaining. Uh, it's about what you would expect from that premise, though, because it's just basically Bill Murray and Harold Ramis being themselves going to boot camp and joining the army. Um, and that's the fact, Jack. Next, we've got another Alfred Hitchcock film. So we've got Suspicion here, another Warner Archive Collection release, um, and this stars Cary Grant and Joan Fontaine. And this is uh, kind of a romantic sort of thriller drama. Um, basically, these two uh, get married, and Joan Fontaine's character gets very suspicious of Cary Grant's character, and eventually starts to believe that he's planning to kill her. And so it's this very suspenseful, very tense, uh, tense story. Uh, a little bit different um, plot-wise than a lot of other Hitchcock movies, but definitely that suspense element is still there. Uh, next is The Ten Commandments. Uh, so this is actually a digibook, and it has two versions of the film. So it's got both the 1923 and the 1956 versions uh, that are both directed by Cecil B. DeMille. Uh, I, I, I'm not somebody who's like into religious epics uh, by any means, but uh, this was one of those movies that was just way too good of a deal to pass up on Black Friday. For two movies and a digi book, this was like $6. So it's like $3 a movie for a digi book. Um, so I, you know, and, and I should watch these because they're, they're popular and influential movies. It's just, I don't know, not really my thing, but I'll still watch them. Something that's definitely more my thing is Them. Uh, so this is a 1954 sci-fi horror movie, um, and it's it's much better <laughs> and much less kind of schlocky than the poster art makes it look. Um, so this is kind of one of those um, uh, sort of, not really a moral tale, but a, a, a cautionary tale about uh, nuclear energy and just atomic energy in general. Uh, and atomic bombs. Uh, so basically, this one, we've got these giant ants, these irradiated ants that are wreaking havoc. Um, and it's it's pretty good. <laughs> uh, much better than it sounds, much better than the posters look. Um, so I'm, I'm excited to have this on Blu-ray. Next, we've got Thor Love and Thunder. So this is the Best Buy uh, exclusive steelbook. This is the fourth Thor film uh, within the MCU, uh, directed by Taika Waititi again, just like um, uh, the third Thor film. And so this, uh, this was pretty good. You know, I, I was kind of surprised I liked it as much. It's definitely goofy. It's definitely way over the top. Um, more, more similar to Thor Ragnarok than the other two Thor films, for sure. But this one goes even sillier and more goofy. Um, but as long as you know that, it's kind of fun. Uh, so I'm, I'm looking forward to re-watching it and checking out some of these special features. Next is Thoroughbreds. So this is a 2017 movie. Uh, I saw this one in theaters, uh, again, back during the movie past heyday, and I really, really enjoyed this one. I haven't seen it since then, just saw it the one time, been very much looking forward to picking this up. Uh, dropped a little bit in price, so I finally, uh, finally went for it. Uh, so this is a very dark, uh, kind of quirky comedy, uh, sort of comedy thriller. Uh, and this stars uh, Olivia Cook and Anya Taylor-Joy as these former friends who kind of reunite and hatch this, uh, this plot. Um, so this one, uh, just a lot of fun. Directed by Corey Finley, um, who has another movie uh, coming out this year that's going to be at Sundance that I'm looking forward to. Uh, so very much excited to rewatch this one. Next we've got Those Who Wish Me Dead. Uh, so this was a 2021 film directed by Taylor Sheridan, who also directed Wind River, which I really like. Um, this one didn't seem to be super popular with people, um, but I, you know, I think it, 
has some potential. It seems like one that could be at least a little bit entertaining. I mean, we've got like mercenaries and a big forest fire and Angelina Jolie. So at least, uh, you know, entertainment for a few hours. Next is another Alfred Hitchcock movie, and that's To Catch a Thief. Uh, so this one is part of the Paramount Presents collection. It's number three in the collection. Uh, it's a 1955 film starring Cary Grant and this time with Grace Kelly. Uh, so basically with this one, Cary, Gla Cary Grant uh, plays a former cat burglar. Uh, he's out of the, the thievery business now, but there is a copycat cat burglar um, who uh, is stealing things and people think it's Cary Grant's character doing it. And so he kind of takes it upon himself to try to catch the copycat cat burglar um, to, to kind of clear his own name. Uh, so this one, a lot of fun. Uh, glad to have it on Blu-ray. Speaking of fun uh, and having it on Blu-ray, Top Gun Maverick. So this one just came out last year, 2022. I do have a review for this one up on the channel. This was a huge surprise to me. Um, the, the original Top Gun, it's okay. Never really been my thing. Uh, and so the fact that we were going to be getting a sequel to it more than 30 years later, wasn't super psyched for it. But man, is this a good movie. Definitely a worthwhile sequel. Um, very entertaining, very action-packed. Actually has like a, a story that means something and is is well put together. Uh, the visuals are great, the stunts are amazing, uh, so I'm very much excited to rewatch this one. Next we've got another Alfred Hitchcock movie uh, and one of those films that I actually have not seen of his and that's Topaz. So this is a 1969 movie some sort of spy thriller. Don't really know too much about it. It's got John Forsyth in it, uh, who's in another Hitchcock movie coming up soon. Um, part of the Alfred Hitchcock masterpiece series. We'll see. Uh, I think this is one of his lesser known, less popular films, uh, and usually there's a good reason for that, but uh, we'll see how it is. Another Hitchcock movie, Torn Curtain. So I have seen this one, another Alfred Alfred Hitchcock masterpiece series film. Uh, this one stars Paul Newman and Julie Andrews as a married couple. And Paul Newman's character is kind of the scientist who uh, is involved in some espionage. I don't, I don't wanna say too much, but Julie Andrews' character does not know what he's involved with uh, and kind of tags along on one of his his missions, uh, and that causes all sorts of uh, things to to happen. Um, so this one, one of the, you know, kind of later Hitchcock movies, different than most of his other films, but uh, it's it's entertaining. There's there's more to this one than, than some of those other movies, like Family Plot, for instance. Next up is Touch of Evil. So this is an Orson Welles film. Uh, released in 1958, starring Orson Welles, Charlton Heston, and Janet Leigh. Uh, so this one is a thriller, uh, like a, a crime thriller, uh, and there's investigations and framing and all sorts of things going on in this. I liked this one. Um, I, to be honest, I'm not huge on most of Orson Welles' films. You know, Citizen Kane is Citizen Kane, uh, but his other movies you know, and even Citizen Kane, like, they're not, they're not really that, uh, entertaining to me. Uh, they're, you know, more of, uh, cinematic history worthwhile. Um, this one is entertaining to me, though. Um, so I, it's been a while since I saw it, but never had it on Blu-ray, and now I do. Another Hitchcock. <laughs> um, so we've got The Trouble with Harry. So I mentioned John Forsyth being in another one. This is another uh, Hitchcock Forsyth uh, reunion here. Um, so this is 1955. I guess that Topaz was a reunion because that came out after this. Um, so this is kind of a rare Hitchcock comedy. Um, it's a dark comedy. It's, I mean, it's about a corpse, uh, <laughs> but it's, it's kind of funny and very strange. 
Uh, basically, there's this guy who turns up dead in this, you know, pretty rural town, I think in Vermont. Um, and a bunch of people in the town think that they might have the, been the, the person who accidentally murdered him. Um, and so there's a bunch of people who are all trying to cover up this guy's death. And so they're like covering it up and somebody else is covering up the cover up and it, it becomes this like crazy web of cover ups and kind of humor and just bizarreness. Um, so it's a fun one, kind of weird again that it's in 4K, but I guess of the uh, 4K Hitchcock so far, this and Saboteur make the most sense. Uh, now we've got The Unbearable Weight of Massive Talent. Uh, so this one, uh, came out this past year, 2022. I have not seen this one, but have heard very good things about it. This was a movie that, based on the trailers, I basically had no interest. I thought this was going to be kind of weird and just, I don't know, didn't really have much interest, but people seem to really like it. It's sort of this meta action comedy, um, with Nicolas Cage and Pedro Pascal. Uh, and so I'm curious, because uh, again, people really like that one. One that people didn't seem to like very much, but I liked, was Uncharted. Uh, so this came out 2022, review for it up on the channel, uh, starring Tom Holland and Mark Wahlberg, based on the video game series, which I have never played, but always wanted to, um, directed by Ruben Fleischer. This is just kind of a fun action-adventure uh, sort of treasure hunting story. Uh, and I tend to like those. I like treasure hunting stories with puzzles and things, I and mean, that's very much National Treasure, and I love that movie. Um, it's just a video game version, uh, video game film adaptation version of that kind of thing. So I, I liked this one. Next up, Under Capricorn. I wonder who directed this, right? Alfred Hitchcock. Um, so this one is uh, similar to Topaz in the sense that I think it's one of his lesser known films and seemingly for, again, good reason. Uh, another one that I have not seen stars Ingrid Bergman uh, and uh, uh, Joseph Cotton and came out in 1949. Seems like it's kind of a romantic thriller, but I, you know, or crime drama kind of thing. I don't really know too much about it, um, but again, one of the few Hitchcocks I haven't seen, and it was on Blu-ray. Uh, you know, there's, there's plenty that I have seen that have never come out on Blu-ray, so figured I might as well get it uh, to, to try to complete my uh, Hitchcock collection as best as I can. Next up, we've got Unhinged, uh, aka Road Rage the movie. Uh, so this came out in 2020. I haven't seen it, but I saw the, the trailers and I think I have a pretty good sense of what this film is. Uh, basically, Russell Crowe is a very angry driver. <laughs> um, so, I, you know, I, I don't know how good it is, but probably, again, entertaining just to see Russell Crowe, Russell Crowe, Russell Crowe um, being... Uh, road ragey. <laughs> Next is When Harry Met Sally. Uh, so this is the 30th anniversary edition, uh, part of the Shout Select uh, uh, collection, number 59 of Shout Select. Um, so this is a uh, very good, very entertaining romantic comedy. Uh, basically we follow Harry, played by Billy Crystal, and Sally, played by Meg Ryan, over the course of a number of years, from their first meeting to various uh, kind of running into each other to eventual friendship and um, beyond. Uh, so this is this is a really good movie, um, and it's one that I really had no excuse for not having on Blu-ray, and now I do. Next is White Christmas. Um, which surprisingly is not the prequel to Black Christmas. Um, so this is a 1954 kind of classic Christmas musical, um, that stars, uh, Bing Crosby and they sing White Christmas and there's all sorts of stuff going on in this, but I haven't seen it. I do have and have seen uh, a very similar film also starring some of the same people called uh, Holiday Inn. Uh, but I haven't seen this one, and I probably should have watched it already closer to Christmas, but 
This is probably going to end up getting watched randomly in the summer sometime. <laughs> Next up is The Wrong Man, which I swear is the last Alfred Hitchcock film in this haul video. Um, it's another Warner Archive Collection movie uh, starring Henry Fonda and Vera Miles. Uh, and The Wrong Man is, unsurprisingly, a wrong man thriller. This one is much more subdued, though. Uh, it's, it's more of kind of the logistics and the kind of police side of a wrong man thriller. Um, certainly more so than most of the other wrong man thrillers that Hitchcock and others have made. Um, but it's kind of a crime drama mystery. I really enjoy this one. Another one that I should have had on Blu-ray a long time ago. And then we've got X. Uh, so this is directed by Ty West, came out in 2022, but I've not seen it yet. I've also not seen Pearl, uh, didn't get it as part of this haul, um, eventually I will. Uh, but this stars, uh, Mia Goth, Jenna Ortega, and a handful of other people. And people seem to really, really like this movie, uh, as well as its prequel, Pearl. Um, so it's sort of this horror, thriller, slasher film, uh, I've, I've avoided looking into it too much because I, I don't want to spoil myself with it, um, or on it, but, uh, got X. All right, so that was part one of my 2022 holiday Blu-ray haul. Part two, which is going to be exclusively Criterion movies, is headed your way next Tuesday, so please check that one out as well. So, did you get any Blu-rays for the holidays? See any of the movies that I got? Let me know your thoughts and all of your pickups in the comments below. Alright, so if you got some enjoyment, insight, or information out of this haul video, I'd appreciate it if you'd hit that like button. And if you haven't done so already, please hit subscribe or add it to see more videos like this, as well as movie reviews. Till next time, this has been Alyssa with Mainly Movies. The way life should be.